Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, and I got a question. Why is it that we say that there are two new years on the sacred calendar? Some say it's the civil year and others say it's the sacred year. But where does all of this come from? In some of our recent classes, we've been looking at the end times events and when they are to take place using old time events as an example. And what we find is that a lot of the events, the significant events of the Bible happened in the first part of the year, in the second month or the first month or the third month. Like for example, Noah and how he actually got on the boat, the ark in the second month and he got off of the ark at the end of the second month. And then how the children of Israel made their trek to Sinai in the second month. But I think the most significant of all of the events is the fall of Jericho back there with Joshua and how he blew the trumpets to go into Jericho in the second month. So where do we get this idea that the memorial blowing the trumpets or Rosh Hashanah as they call it is a new year? Now, the quick answer and probably the most truthful answer is because the Jewish people told us that it was. But when we try to find Rosh Hashanah or any reference to a new year starting in the seventh month, we can't find it anywhere in scripture. So where are they getting it from? So we come over here to Google and I did a search for is Rosh Hashanah in the Bible and turns out it's not explicitly mentioned in the Torah or even the other Jewish texts like the Talmud and all of that. The word Rosh Hashanah is not even in the text. But then notice this part right here where it says the Torah does, however, mention a sacred occasion that starts in the first day of the seventh month of the Jewish calendar around the time of Rosh Hashanah. Where are they getting that from if it's not in the scripture? You see here answering the question, what is Rosh Hashanah called in the Bible? It says Yom Teruah. Rosh Hashanah, which means the head of the year, is the Jewish New Year. The biblical name for the holiday is Yom Teruah. It is the traditional anniversary of the creation of the world and the creation of Adam and Eve, who are known in the biblical as first man and woman. So they're using the word as if it's in the Bible and if it's referencing something, but turns out it's not actually in there. Look at this one. This question says, is Rosh Hashanah in the Old Testament? It says, the Feast of Trumpets is recorded in the book of Leviticus 23 and also in Numbers 29. The term Rosh Hashanah, meaning the beginning of the year, appears only in Ezekiel 40 verse 1, where it refers to the general time of the year and not specifically the Feast of Trumpets. So here we are starting to get down to it, guys. What they're saying here is that the only time we see Rosh Hashanah, which they're saying is the head of the year or the beginning of the year, is in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 40. So let's go over there and see what it says. Verse 1 says, In the five and twentieth year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the tenth day of the month, in the fourteenth year, after that the city was smitten, in the self same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. So here you don't see Rosh Hashanah. Here you see the phrase beginning of the year, which we just learned is the only time we're going to see this in the Bible coming from Ezekiel chapter 40 and verse one. But look at this. It's talking about the 10th day of the month when the city was smitten, talking about Jerusalem and the first temple. And so we come over here and start looking at times mentioning the 10th day of the month when the city was smitten. We find ourselves in 2 Kings in chapter 25 when King Nebuchadnezzar came to Jerusalem and pitched against it. This was the beginning of the siege in Jerusalem. But notice it occurred in the 10th month, not the 7th month. We see the same thing in Jeremiah 52 and verse 4 talking about King Nebuchadnezzar coming against Jerusalem. But if you know the story, there was a little time between when he besieged the city and when he actually burned it down. And in verse 12, we see that it was in the fifth month and the fifth day of the month that they actually burned it down. So where is the seventh month in all of this? What is Ezekiel talking about in the beginning of the year? 
Well, when I see things like this, guys, even though I love the King James version of the Bible, that's what I grew up in. I've learned that the more reliable source of information when it comes to these type of questions is the Septuagint translation of the Bible. This translation was created hundreds of years even before the Messiah appeared on the earth and he actually quoted from this book along with John, Paul, Mark, and everybody else in the New Testament who quoted the Old Testament. They quoted from the Septuagint, if not the Hebrew text that they had. But what we find in the Septuagint is that it reads a little bit differently than what we saw over there in the King James Version. It says, And it came to pass in the 25th year of our captivity, in the first month, in the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year after the taking of the city. In that day, the hand of the Lord was upon me. So, this is different. See, first of all, it doesn't say the beginning of the year. It says the first month. You see over here, the King James says in the beginning of the year. But then notice this other part, which I believe is causing the most confusion here, is where it says in the self same day, as if to say that the city was smitten in the beginning of the year on this 10th day of the month. But the Septuagint doesn't read like that at all. It doesn't say in the self same day. It says in that day, pointing back to the 10th day of the first month. So I asked this question again. Where do they get the idea that there are two new years? Moses was told in Exodus chapter 12 that Abib was the first month and never do we see in any scripture other than what appears to be a mistranslation or a misinterpretation of Ezekiel chapter 40, there is no mention of any other head of the year. And even when you look at the Septuagint, for the head of the year in Ezekiel chapter 40, it says the first month. So, as of right now, I don't believe that there is a such thing as a new year beginning in September. That to me seems like only a Jewish thing. But I'm not absolutely sure. So you guys help me out. Am I missing something? Where is this head of the year coming from in the seventh month? Have we been counting our years wrong? Starting in the fall instead of the spring? Or has the Jewish people made something up? Y'all let me know what you think in the comment section. Maybe y'all know something I don't know.